2. Assemble the front wheel. Loosen axle nuts on the front wheel to make room for the front fork. Lift the front of the bike and lower the fork onto the wheel axle. Notice the brake rotor should go into the brake caliper in between the brake pads and the axle should enter the fork dropouts fully. The front rotor orientation should be to the left of the fork. After inserting the front axle onto the fork, you will need to line up the axle lock washers. These are the metal washers with a bent tab on one side with the hole at each fork. Notice these two special fork lock washers keep the wheel from falling off if the axle nuts ever loosen up. Tighten axle nuts by hand. Once the lock washers are in place, tighten both axle nuts with the supplied double open end wrench. Note, before doing the final tightening of the axle nuts, make sure the wheel is square and true with the forks. Push the black plastic nut caps onto the axle nuts. Step 3. Install the handlebar. Loosen the bolt on the top of the stem with the supplied Allen wrench. Remove the stem bolt and washer and set aside. Remove and discard the plastic spacer. Install the handlebars onto the steer stem. Pass the stem bolt through the washer mounting point and the stem mount. Tighten with the supplied Allen wrench part way. Align the stem so the handlebar is perpendicular to the front wheel. Use the Allen wrench to tighten the stem clamp bolts evenly, a half a turn at a time alternating between the two bolts. Tighten the bolt on top of the stem with the supplied Allen wrench. Perform a twist test. Brace the front wheel between your legs. Switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force. Make sure the handlebar and front wheel are still properly aligned. Repeat the twist test, pulling and pushing with the opposite hands. Step 4. Install the LCD display. Loosen the bolts on the LCD display clamp with the supplied Allen wrench and set aside. Remove the spacer. Clamp the LCD display onto the handlebars and align it with the stem. Notice, the stem will go in between the two LCD display clamps. Tilt the LCD display to the optimal position and tighten the bolts. Step 5. Adjust the front brake system. Notice, the adjustment of the front brake system is not easy. The following steps are only a general guide to assist in the adjustment of the front brake system. Consult a certified, reputable bike mechanic to assist with it. The end goal is a caliper that is parallel to the rotor with an even gap of 2-3 to three millimeters on each side and an adequate lever feel. Before adjusting the front brake system, make sure the axle nuts in Step 1 have been tightened. Alignment Procedure of the Front Brake Notice, usually all bike's rear brakes were adjusted in the good condition at the factory. If not, alignment procedures are the same for the front and rear brakes. The end goal here is to keep 2-3 to three millimeters clearance on either side of the disc brake rotor so that the pads do not rub on the rotor when they are not applied. On the front disc brake caliper, there are two bolts mounting it to the front fork. Loosen the mounting bolts until the caliper body is able to freely move side to side. Then squeeze the brake lever. This centers the caliper body over the rotor. While holding the lever, tighten the bolts. Release the brake lever, spin the wheel, and check for pad rub. If there is no rubbing, the pads are aligned. Secure the mounting bolts to full torque and your work is complete. If the pads are still rubbing, we need to do some fine tuning. Loosen one bolt at a time and adjust until there is a gap on either side of the rotor. Once the pads are not rubbing, fully secure each mounting bolt and the process is complete. To achieve proper gap, it is sometimes necessary to move pads by pad adjusters. Calipers are equipped with pad adjusters that move the brake pads in or out from the rotor. Notice, turning the mounting bolts clockwise will move the pad closer to the rotor. Turning it counterclockwise will move it away from it. Adjust the mounting bolt with the supplied Allen wrench. Check and adjust the travel at the brake lever at the handlebars. Typically, the pads should feel like they are contacting the rotor at a minimum of half the lever travel. We will get it by adjusting the brake cable tension. Loosen the bolt on the end of the disc brake caliper arm with the supplied Allen wrench to adjust the brake cable tension. Once achieved, the required tension mentioned above, fully secure the mounting bolt and the process is complete. Step 6. Install the front fender and headlight. 
Remove the fender and headlight mounting bolt from the front fork arch with the supplied screwdriver and set aside. Place the fender in position, past the front fender mounting point under the front fork arch from the back of the front tire. Attach the headlight and fender to the fork arch. Pass the bolt through the headlight mount, the fender mounting point, and the fork arch mounting point. Thread the lock nut onto the bolt end and tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Notice, the fender bracket will go in between the arch bracket and the headlight bracket. Attach the fender mounting arms to the front fork. Remove the mounting bolts from the fork. Pass the bolt through the arm mount and fork mounting point. Ensure the fender is centered and tighten both mounting bolts. Center the headlight and adjust the angle slightly downwards to illuminate the road ahead and to not blind oncoming traffic. Use the supplied Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the headlight angle adjustment bolt. Tilt the headlight to the optimal position and then tighten in place securely. Step 7. Install the seat. Open the quick release lever by hinging it open fully. Insert the seat post into the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height while ensuring the seat post is inserted into the frame past the minimum insertion point. Close the quick release lever to secure the seat post and check that it cannot move. If needed, use the thumb nut to add tension to the clamp so there is some resistance when the lever is in line with the clamp bolt. Step 8. Install the pedals. Locate the pedal with an R stamped into the end of the pedal axle, which indicates it is the right pedal. The right pedal goes on the crank on the right side of the bike. The remaining pedal with an L stamped onto the end of the axle is the left pedal. The left pedal goes on the crank on the left side of the bike. The right pedals are threaded to tighten by turning clockwise. The left pedals are reverse threaded and tighten counterclockwise. Carefully thread the pedal onto the crank by hand slowly. Further tighten with the supplied double open end wrench. Do not cross thread or damage the threads. Step 9. Inflate the tires. Check that the tire beads and tires are evenly seated around the rims. Use a pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge to inflate each tire to the recommended pressure indicated on the tire sidewall. Do not overinflate or underinflate the tires. Step 10. Charge the battery. Operate the electrical system when the battery has been adequately charged and the battery is secured to the frame mount. Your NACTO bike comes partially charged. We recommend you connect the charger input plug, the 120-220 volt plug, to the power outlet for three to four hours. The charger light will go from red to green when it is fully charged. Step 11. 